This is Cup of Sunshine, your Friday podcast brought to you by the Phoenix Center team of the Deutsche Internationale Schule Johannesburg. Welcome, I'm Fiona Schäfer, the coordinator for inclusion. Today I would like to speak about how to talk to your children about race, diversity and inclusion. Over the last few weeks and months, intense protests fueled by the killing of African Americans in the US have taken place worldwide to address institutionalized racism. Movements such as Black Lives Matter are very visible all over the media. No matter how much we might want to shield our children from these images, kids will likely be overhearing conversations about race, racial differences and racism and asking questions. Experts say that how you answer could shape your children's feelings about race for years to come. Not shying away from those conversations is the first step in raising an anti-racist child. This moment in time provides us with an opportunity. Adults might want to turn off the TV or be silent, but kids are getting their information and understanding from other places and might have conversations with their peers. It makes it much more important to have these conversations so they aren't getting outside messages different from what you as parents want them to have. Those initial conversations can be unnerving, but educators urge parents not to shy away from them, even if the children are young. Underestimating their ability to comprehend issues around race and injustice would be a mistake. Talking about it is important for the following reasons. Firstly, everyone has a racial identity. Secondly, racialized identities have a major impact on a person's life. And thirdly, race is a defining social construction in South Africa. Race is relatively simple to address when a child notices skin color for the first time. Racism is understandably harder to talk about. Few parents will consider themselves or their children racist, with its connotations of intentional, angry or mean behavior against different groups of people. But intention isn't always part of racism. Most people don't intend any harm. They're still making judgments based on race. Often those judgments come from implicit racial bias, something we might in internalize through everyday interactions and social messaging resulting in beliefs that we might not even realize we have, but can still cause into unintentional racist behavior. The goal is to raise children who are anti-racist. We should raise children who can express notions of racial equality, who can see racial disparities as a problem, and who can do their own small part to challenge this big problem of racism. Developing empathy, compassion, and a sense of justice at an early age helps kids grow into adults who want to help make the world a better place. For parents, that often means taking a deep breath and having those tough conversations about race and racism. Regardless of how the conversation begins, parents should be sending the signal that it's okay and important to talk about it. Additionally, it's not just about the child, but the work that we as adults need to be doing. Understanding the history of race relations in the country and the variety of ways that demonstrations and oppression can take place will make it easier to discuss these subjects with kids. We know that children are capable of understanding, but they might need some support given all the messages that they are receiving about themselves and others. Give space to kids for their own emotional journeys and their own emotional unpacking. If a child says, that lady's black, and she is, then just agree with her. It's not racist to notice someone's race, but an unwillingness to acknowledge her observation might send the wrong message to the child. What parents do need to listen for are any value judgments kids may be unknowingly placing on those differences and then gently correct them. Respond with open, non-judgmental questions to understand why your child might be making that assumption. Simple questions like, why do you think that or what makes you say that can help get the conversation started. If you hear a child expressing an idea about a group of people that they don't realize is biased, engage them in an age-appropriate conversation about it. Also, take a hard look at the books, movies and TV shows your child is consuming and you'll likely notice a pattern about which group are represented the most. Consider introducing your family to media that reboots notions around what a hero, neighbor or friend might look like. Introduce diversity to different aspects of your life. In order for kids to embrace anti-racial ideas, they need to be exposed to people who are different from them. You are a role model to your child too. 
What you say is very important, but what you do, the diversity of your friendship circle, for example, is likely to have an even bigger impact. Don't make talking about race a one-time event. You don't have to set up a time to have a race talk. Conversations can naturally occur if you're paying attention to your child's statements and staying aware of ways that unconscious bias can slip in. And finally, don't pressure yourself to have all the answers. Above all, remember that there's no one right way to have these conversations. Just like other important and uncomfortable conversations, you might find yourself wishing you'd answer a question differently in retrospect. Own it. It takes practice. That's all for today. I hope you'll join us next week again for more helpful hints and tips from the Phoenix Center.